All of us here at electrifying.com drive electric cars personally and professionally pretty much all the time. But we usually only get a few days with a new car. And whilst we cram a lot into testing and filming in that time, there's nothing like spending a bit longer living with something. And for the last few months, I've been getting up close and personal with this. which means that it's now time for a proper Buckley verdict on what it's like to live with the Audi Q4 e-tron, the first pure electric mid-sized SUV from Audi. But before we get to that, please do like and subscribe and do let us know what you think of this car in the comments below. So first up, what model have I been living with? Well, this is an Audi Q4 e-tron 40 Sport. It weighs in at just over £49,000 if you were to order one today. There is a less powerful 35 and a more powerful all-wheel drive 50 in the Sport range, as well as the more expensive S-Line and Edition 1 trim packages. But this seems like a real sweet spot for range versus price and the one that most people seem to buy, so it's been the perfect one to test. For that, I've got one motor driving the rear wheels in the back there, a possible 321 miles of range, five seats and a good size boot. Now, it is, I think, a pretty handsome car and I've actually grown more fan of it the longer it's been parked outside my house. You know, from this big, bold, blanked off Audi grille at the front with these squinting LED headlights on top. Matrix LED lights are incidentally over a thousand pound option. And then down at the back, you've got the big shoulders and a full length light bar. I mean, overall, I think all this adds together to create a really good looking car. Okay, so it's not going to make your mouth fall open in awe, but everything about it looks solid and smart, classy and understated. And I reckon that's often better than showy and outrageous. It's certainly had lots of approving nods and murmurs from friends and family, along with a few folk who've actually knocked on my door to ask about it. The downside? Well, in summer, this big grill gets absolutely covered in dead flies, particularly after a long drive. I bet nobody's mentioned that in any of the reviews, have they? Now look, don't forget that this car is based on the same VW Group hardware as things like the Skoda Enyaq and the VW ID4, but with an Audi styling makeover. And I think the designers have done a really good job of making this car look exactly like you would expect a modern Audi to look. The good news keeps going inside. Now, some people who know me might suggest unfairly that I'm not the best at keeping my cars as spotless as they should be. Stop nodding your head behind the camera there, Manos. Very rude. Um, but I am pleased to say that even with my levels of pretty destructive testing, nothing has fallen off or broken in the Q4, even when faced with the full rigours of the Buckley household, which is quite rigorous, to be honest. All right, this piano black trim is bit irritating, looks lovely, but impossible to keep clean. Um, other than that, it's held up really well in here. Apart from that, this is a really nice place to spend time, and I've become more and more appreciative of it over the last few months. Good design always wins out, and I really like the mixture of materials and surfaces on this sharp and quite designer-looking dash. Even the way the geometric steering wheel reflects the shape of the instrument binnacle behind it is a nice touch. Plus, it's got all my pet peeves sorted. You want physical controls for the aircon? Here they are. You want a crisp, clear touchscreen that works? Yes, it's got that too. And yes, I have found that easy to understand uh, and to get used to, uh, with lots of useful functions once you've mastered the basics. However, Audi's own infotainment system is really nice and slick. Definitely the best out of the VW Group systems. But my problems come when I want to connect to Apple CarPlay, which like many of us, I just prefer to use. It's just not as slick or as quick as I'd like it to be. It can be really frustrating. It's quite glitchy uh, and it just doesn't always connect. Look, it's not a deal breaker, but it's something that could and does really need to be improved. It's just noticeably not as good as you'd find in the likes of BMW. Kia, Polestar, Hyundai, and yeah, I could probably go on. I would also like to know more about the efficiency and consumption of this car because the level of info you get is pretty woeful, really. All you can do is check your efficiency and adjust your charging levels. You can do more on the app, 
but the app is actually quite complicated to get hold of. So my advice to you, if you're buying a Q4 e-tron, is ask your dealer about the app. Do not leave the dealership until you know exactly how to download it, because if you're trying to do that retrospectively, it can present a few challenges. As for space, well, it's got more than enough for family life. There's loads of storage, especially in the doors, which fit a good size water bottle in, which is a bonus for me. And there are plenty of places to put things. Lots of places, in fact, for my team to stuff all those sweet wrappers in for me to find three months later. Now, I'm obviously not the hugest of humans, uh, but the driving seat does adjust brilliantly to really allow for comfortable long drives. Now, I've been suffering the last couple of months with a muscle tear in a place that you really don't want to get one, which let's just say has made sitting down a little bit uncomfortable. And this is one of only two cars that I've felt really comfortable in and be able to drive for longish distances in. And the other one, it's a Bentley. So the Q4 e-tron is in very good company when it comes to comfort. Round at the back, the 520 litre boot has hauled everything from football kit to full on camping setups plus dog, all the way down to Cornwall and back several times. And we've never come up short for space. If you do need extra space, and of course the rear seats fold, giving you a really good load area, which I've used on more than one occasion. And yes, you can fit a roof box or a rack. There's also the option for a tow bar if you want to carry bikes or tow an actual trailer. But where the Q4 e-tron has really scored for me is behind the wheel. I've just found it to be one of the most comforting companions I've ever had. Look, as I mentioned, this thing has been used for everything from long cold trips down to Cornwall to whizzing about town, going into London. And I've been happy driving on everything from motorways to B roads. Look, it's quiet, goes without saying it's electric, but it's actually more than that. You know, even the windscreen wipers are hushed, which is probably something to do with the special acoustic glazing. The steering is really well judged. The brake's just about perfect. Look, drawback for me, there's no true one pedal driving. A bit of a boo there, because I love that. But I do challenge myself to use nothing but maximum B mode brake regeneration most of the time. And let me tell you, the last time I had to use my actual brakes for anything but a final stop was last Thursday, back in July. No, not really, of course. Um, but it is actually the mode out of the various uh, modes that you can access, including things like dynamic driving, which tightens everything up. That's the mode that I use the most. If I was to sum this car up in one word, I would say serene. Um, after a long filming day or loads of meetings or just generally being busy running the family around, the e-tron is just a relaxing, calm place to retreat to. The ride is genuinely impressive. It's just an easy thing to drive, and that is worth an awful lot these days. Look, it's not the most sporting of cars I've ever driven, and it's definitely not going to get your pulses racing too much with just 201 brake horsepower on offer. But a 0-62 time of 8.5 seconds is, on the whole, enough for most. Yeah, you know, I found it could be a bit more peppy at times, but nothing you don't get used to, and you can overtake and pull into traffic gaps with confidence. The 50 model does get another motor and more power and speed, but really, I'm not sure you need it. I found this 40 to be more than enough for me. The Q4 e-tron comes with 11 kilowatt AC charging, which is good and 135 kilowatt DC charging, which is okay. Now, 135 kilowatt DC charging used to be plenty when ultra rapid chargers weren't that common, but there are a few more of them now. And on the odd occasion when I find one, I'd really like to be able to make the most of them. So that could definitely be improved. It's not a big deal if you've got home charging, you probably won't need to use it quite so much, but I do do long distances and it matters to me when I get there and I see a more powerful charging option that I can't use. Yes, that 77.6 kilowatt hour battery does take a while on the average home wall box. I've been looking at 12 and a half hours from flat to full, so do be aware of that when you're planning your charging and your driving. The really good news though is that you'll get plenty of usable range for your charging time. The official quoted figure for this model is 321 miles of range, and in mixed use, I've regularly been getting 280 miles plus. I think it's pretty good for this size of car. It's around 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour of energy. Now look, that's not hugely efficient. A really good number would be at least over four, 
And I have been averaging closer to that on conditions that are more local roads rather than motorways. But it's not bad for this size of SUV and I do do a lot of motorway driving. So what do I think after six months of living with Audi's Q4 e-tron? Well, having driven it in rain, in sun and just about everything in between, taken it on long trips and short and subjecting it to the kind of testing that only happens in real life driving, I reckon this is a really solid choice. You know, I tend to get out of it feeling refreshed no matter how long or irritating the journey has been. Look, there are definitely things that can be improved. The multimedia system does need tweaking, particularly that interface with CarPlay or Android Auto. I reckon it could offer higher charging rates too. And that three-year warranty looks a bit mean next to the seven-year warranties you get from the likes of Kia and Hyundai, even MG these days. But in the time I've spent with it, it's never failed to relax me after a hard day or be comfortable on a long trip. Nothing has fallen off or broken. And other than a slightly irritating situation with a flat tyre that was mainly down to the crappiness of the dealer rather than the car itself, it's done everything I've needed while looking classy and at market all the time. I reckon this car is a winner and a great all-round family car. As ever, if you want to know more about the Audi Q4 e-tron or any of its competitors, then do head over to electrifying.com. We can help you work through any questions you might have and we can even help you buy one. And don't forget, of course, to subscribe to the channel and switch those notifications on.